Now that we've come up with this whole idea about what these things are, right? What is their, what is our, our cost of debt? What is our cost of preferred stock? And what is our cost of equity, whether it's retained earnings or new issued equity? We can now come up with our weighted average cost of capital. This is one of the biggest things that any CFO is going to do. They are monitoring this day after day, looking at what is my cost of capital? What is my capital structure, right? What is my composition of debt and equity? and trying to figure out what is the way in which we maximize shareholder value. Right? That's what we're looking at, maximizing shareholder value. Okay? So within this here is that we c we're going to have these weights, right? These weights are these amounts right here, the weights according to uh, debt, to preferred stock, and to equity. Okay? Now, one thing that we need to, to make sure is clear is that all three of these things are going to add up to one, right? Because our weights is that we look at our total amount of capital, right? Our total amount of capital, the total amount of assets and everything, assets and equity that we have in our company, that has to add up to, a, to our number, right? And this is just the percentage of those assets, okay? So, for example, is let's say that we have um, $400 million of my company is financed through debt. Let's say that we have $50 million that's financed in preferred stock. And let's say that we're financed by... Um, say 600, 600 million dollars in uh, in common stock. Okay, so this tells us here is that our total amount, our total amount of assets here is 1,050. We just say what is my weight on debt? It's going to be 400 million divided by our total assets of 1050, and that tells us that we're going to have a weight on debt at 0.38, right? And we're going to have a weight on uh, preferred stock at 5%. And that means that what are we going to have to have for the, um, the weight on all our uh, weight on stock? It's going to be at 0.57, right? Which naturally, all of this adds up to 1. Look at that. Okay? So that's what's going to come up with our weights. Now, using whatever methods that we used earlier, right, is that we came up with R sub DT, come up with R sub DT at 4.61%, right? Remember, we are using the cost of after-tax cost of debt. We are not using what that bond cost is, that 6.69%. We are using the after-tax cost of debt, which is 4.61%, okay? We also came up with a value on our, uh, on our equity, right, as being... Uh, what, right, 9.79%. Okay. And, you know, we can use, in this one here, notice how it says either or, is that we can use, we, you can use either one of them. And when I teach this and when I look at this, is that I, I tend to ignore the flotation cost just because it makes the math a little bit simpler and it's, uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a cost. Um, in real life, of course, you, you want to you look at this. Um, but... You know, their base, their, their costs are close enough that you can come up with this weighted average cost of capital relatively easily. Okay, so we're we're just using that that RE here, which we said was 9.79 percent. We got that through using the bond yield plus method, but we could also find this, uh, you know, using the Gordon growth model, or we could find this using Cap M. Right, we have three different methods that we can use to do this. It just depends on what information that you're given. Okay, now we didn't work through something on the return on preferred stock. Right, but we know that the value of this is going to fall where? We know it's going to fall in between the cost of debt and the cost of equity because it's, it's less risky than equity but more risky than debt, right? So this year, I'm just going to throw a number in here. Let's say that the uh, required return on preferred stock is 7%. Okay. Now what we have is we have enough information to come through and... Now we have enough information to work this through and figure out exactly what our weighted average cost of capital is, right? We figured out our weights, and we figured out our returns, our required returns, okay? We have our weights right here. We have our required returns over here, okay? So we know that our weighted average cost of capital here is going to be equal to the weight on debt, which is 0.38. And that is multiplied by our return on debt, right, which is 4.61%. Plus, we're going to add on to that our weight on preferred stock, which is at 
0 0.05, and that's multiplied by 7. And then we're going to add on to that our weight on uh, equity, which is 0.57, and that is multiplied by our return on equity, which is 9.79%. And so all of this here tells us, right, we, we did our math here, we added this to that, to that, we worked it through. That's telling us then that our weighted average cost of capital is going to be 7.68%. Okay, so this is, of all the capital that we have in our firm, if we're looking at a project, every project that we're considering doing has to be above our weighted average cost of capital, right? Because we have to make sure that our current shareholders are compensated adequately. We have to make sure that we're able to pay the adequate dividend on a preferred stock. And, you know, our, uh, our debt, you know, has to get paid as well. Okay, so that tells us what our weighted average cost of capital is. Uh, this is our introduction into the weighted average cost of capital. And look forward to more later.